Welcome everyone to our new ISO series. Uh, we're going to be looking at the new Smart Classrooms version 3 system. How do I create a lesson using Smart Classrooms version 3? Now we're coming to you today from sunny Brisbane. Uh, we're obviously stuck inside during isolation, keeping safe. Uh, we hope that everyone out there is doing the same thing. So let's jump in and have a look at how we're going to create lessons and send them home to our students so that they can access the lessons at home, uh, either by themselves or with their parents, uh, whilst those couple of students that are still at school can also access the same material. So let's get started. All right, so as far as the system goes, Smart Suite and TV for Education hasn't changed. So the way that we get access to Smart Classrooms is by first clicking on the system menu at the top of the screen. Now remember, you do have to log in before you get access to any of the facilities that I'm about to show you. So if you don't have an account already for uh, Smart Suite or TV for Education, please go and have a chat to either your librarian uh, or your ICT staff and they can help you out. Uh, if they're unavailable, give us a call or send us an email and we'll be able to assist you out. Just make sure that you've got your school name ready and your school email address ready. Okay, so once we've logged in, we come up to our little system menu here and we come down to Smart Classrooms. Now in here, we've got the ability to access all the lessons that we created in the past, but we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new lesson. Now the first thing the system is going to ask us for is a lesson name and a lesson description. So we can go ahead and type that in. Okay, once we enter that in, we can go ahead and click the save icon. The lesson has now been saved into our library. So everything that we do from now is automatically saved by the system. So as we're adding uh, new resources in and making changes, we don't have to hit a global save button down the bottom. Okay, now the first thing that I might want to do with my lesson is give the students a little bit of a description as to what we're going to be talking about today. So we want to add some text in. And the way that we do that is over on the left hand side, we have these two add buttons, one of which is add resources. When the add resources window loads, we have a number of options that we can choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and choose text. Once we've selected the option, all we now need to do is we just follow the prompts that are on the screen. So the first thing that this particular object is asking me for is a title for my text object. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter welcome message. Then I'm gonna go down to my text box and I'm gonna type the message that I want my students to see. So welcome to our lesson on large font bond inertia. We're going to have a look at what is inertia and how does it affect our everyday lives. Don't forget you can email me at any time on teacher at school Okay, we might manipulate the font, add some color to our text, uh, make it bold using any of the buttons that are available in the text editor. Okay, now once we've gone ahead and formatted the text the way that we want it to appear, we come down and we hit the save. That's going to insert that object into our lesson. Now the next thing that I might wanna do is I might wanna add a video from TV for Education. So again, I'm gonna go back to my add resources, but this time, I'm going to click TV for Education. Okay, and I'm going to choose this video down the bottom here. 
and that has gone ahead and added that video into my lesson. Now it's come across with the standard um, title from TV for Education and I want to make some changes to that. And I'd also like to add a little hint for the students to pay attention at a certain point in the video because that's going to help out with the questions later on. So if I want to make any changes to any of my text objects, on the left hand side of the object that I'm wanting to make the change to, I have a little edit icon. Go ahead and click on that. I've now got the ability to change the title. And I've got the ability to add in a hint. Okay, and my hint has been applied for me over the right hand side and the title of that video object has also been changed. Now, if you didn't want to necessarily put a hint in, uh, you don't have to. If you wanted to still go and use the video editor and actually edit the segments out so that the students can't watch any other portion of the video, you still have access to the video clipping tool by clicking on the scissors next to the video that you want to edit. So if I go ahead and click on that, it brings up the video editor and I've got the ability to go through and edit the chapters that I want to keep. Okay, if we're wanting some more information on how that video editor works, we've got the help button at the top here. Once that page loads, if you put in a search for clipping videos, You can see that you've got version two and version three. So if you go ahead and click version three, you'll be able to have a look at our instructions on how to edit the videos, as well as a video down the bottom, which will go into detail on how that process works. Okay, so once we've gone ahead and we've used the resource button to add our videos, upload, upload our own worksheets, uh, add in some websites or material that's been sourced from other uh, online databases, we can then add some questions. Now we do this by clicking on the add question button. Now this is going to bring up the ability for us to add three different types of questions. We've got the multiple choice, we've got our yes, no, or true, false, and we have our missing word. So if I wanted to add a multiple choice question, we type in the question in the top box there, we can add a little hint, And then we can provide some options for the students to look at. Okay, after we've entered in the possible results, we then select the correct answer. Now multiple choices will allow you to select multiple correct answers. So just bear that in mind, if you wanted to trip up the students or make it a little bit more difficult for them, you can enter in multiple correct answers for them to select. If they don't select all of them, they will be marked as wrong on the results reports. Once we've done that, we go ahead and click save. And that's gone ahead and added that question in for us. If I wanted to add another one,
Okay, we can select the correct answer again for our true false. And that's added that in. And we now have the last one, which is our missing word. So the missing word one, very simple. All we need to do is start typing. Now, once again, we can use the formatting to make sure that we've got the, uh, the correct uh, font and weight of, this, of the sentence that we want to show to the students. Okay, in the place of the correct answer, we put our cursor into the sentence and we click add missing word. Okay, this is put in a little box for us and in that box, all we need to do is type the correct answer. Okay, again, we've got a little area to put in a question hint if that's what we wanted to do and we can go ahead and save that. Okay, so when the students receive this on their end, they're gonna have the ability to select the correct answer. They'll have the ability to also type in the correct answer into your missing words. And with those sentences, you can have them as long as you want, uh, just adding in those missing words along the way. Okay, once we've finished our lesson, we then want the ability to share this lesson with our students. So if I go ahead and select share from the toolbar at the bottom of the page, we've now got the ability to grab the URL. Now just be very mindful when you're going through and sharing your lesson. There are a couple of options that you have access to. So the first one is my lesson can be seen by this class group. Okay, currently it's showing everyone. If I want to secure my lesson because I've got some uh, more mature content in there, um, I might be doing some sex education or study on an M-rated movie for English. From the drop-down list, I need to select year 12 or year 11. Okay, and that's gonna make sure that if that URL gets into the hands of a year seven student, they're not gonna be able to access my lesson. I've then also got the ability to select my lesson is accepting answers or my lesson is not accepting answers. So we've got this in the system because number one, it allows you to not give any students uh, priority over um, one another. So if you wanted them to start submitting their responses as of tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, set it to not accepting and post that URL to your learning management system. When nine o'clock comes around, jump back into your lesson, hit the share link and change it to accepting and they'll be able to start submitting their responses. It also works in the other way. Uh, if you say to your students in that first text box, uh, make sure that you submit all of your answers before three o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. At three o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, you can come in and go not accepting. No student will be able to submit their answers after that point. Okay, so it just gives you a little bit of control to manage the submissions of your students. Once you've gone ahead and selected the uh, URLs, uh, sorry, selected the parameters correctly, you can then go ahead and click on the share link field and that's going to automatically copy that link to your clipboard. So if you then opened up your uh, emails and emailed that link to all your students or you uh, posted that to your learning management system they will be able to access that lesson from home, on a mobile phone, on an iPad, laptop, um, at school, anywhere that they've got access to the internet and a browser. Okay, when it opens up for them, they're going to basically see exactly what you see, except for all of these icons that they obviously don't have access to edit for the lesson. Okay, so they will work through it on their end. They're going to read the text, watch the video, answer the questions. They'll submit their answers once they've completed the lesson. And tomorrow, we're going to go and have a look at how do we view the results reports in Smart Classroom version three. Okay, so stay tuned for that one. Um, I believe that it's gonna be 12 o'clock tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so make sure you come along to that. 
we'll have a look at how do we print worksheets using the new system, how do we look at results reports, and how do we monitor the student engagement through Smart Classrooms version 3. So I hope that that was uh, a fairly informative session for you. Uh, on Monday, when we release Smart Classrooms version 3, all teachers and all administrators should have received an email from us with the Quick Start Guide for version 3. Now the Quick Start Guide will have all the information that we're covering in today's session and uh, tomorrow's session in a nice little printable PDF. So if you didn't receive that, again, have a chat to your administrator, whether it's your librarian or ICT staff or head of learning. Um, if they don't know who the administrator is, reach out to us at support at functionalsolutions.com.au Tell us your school and make sure that it's coming from your school's email address and we'll help you out. So once again, we're hoping that everyone's staying safe and keeping well during this really unprecedented time that we're going through. Uh, we're looking forward to doing a whole host of these live events coming up over the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the uh, uh, YouTube channel for Functional Solutions. Uh, jump onto Facebook and follow us there. We'll be porting information across between all the different platforms. My name is Quinton and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.